Do you conceal carry? If the answer is yes, then you're gonna want to stick around because today we're gonna talk about five concealed carry mistakes that you just might be making. And I'm guilty of number five. Number one, not using a proper holster. This is one that you see a lot with people who are newer to concealed carry. They go out, they buy a concealed carry handgun, then they get a holster, but they forget that they're gonna need a way to support that two pound dead weight that they've got riding on their hip. And that cheap belt that you've got from Walmart just is not up to the task of supporting the weight of your concealed carry handgun. And this could result in a wardrobe malfunction, which means you're gonna lose control of your handgun. Definitely a bad situation. So what you need to do is get a belt that is specifically meant for concealed carry. And it doesn't have to be like some kind of crazy, you know, military or tactical style belt that it's gonna make you look like some kind of nerd when you're out in public. Now the belt that I use every day is from Core, that's K-O-R-E. As you can see, it looks like just a standard belt, nothing crazy. But under the hood, this thing is a lot more rigid, a lot more stiff than your standard belt from Walmart or wherever. This is gonna allow it to support the weight of your gun, no problem. The other cool thing about this belt is that it has a ratcheting mechanism to tighten it. So you slide in there and you can hear it ratchet as I tighten it. This is cool because it allows you to tighten the belt just right around your gun as you're wearing it every day. And then when you get home, if you take your gun off, you can easily adjust it no problem. So if you're into concealed carry, you definitely have to have a good belt to support your concealed carry handgun. And I would consider having a good belt to be almost just as important as using a good holster. Number two, constantly touching the gun. This is another mistake that people who are newer to concealed carry tend to make a lot. They're constantly you know, touching the gun, checking on it, making sure is it still there? Is it still there? When you're weirdly like touching your hip all the time to check on your gun, people are gonna notice. Now, they may think that you know, you're just some kind of a nut or something, or they may even think that you're a Democrat. I guess those are actually the same thing. But they also may put two and two together and realize that you have a gun on you. Great job, you just totally blew the whole point of concealing your gun in the first place, and now the bad guys are gonna know who to shoot first. So to avoid this, just use a good belt and a good holster, and that gun is gonna stay put, I guarantee you, and you won't need to be constantly checking on it to make sure that it's still there. Now, if you're concerned that the gun may become exposed as you're moving around and going about your daily business, you might need to make some adjustments to the type of clothing that you wear, but most people are typically just wearing, you know, a t-shirt and a hoodie anyway, and that's usually gonna be enough to keep the gun concealed. We still got three more concealed carry mistakes to talk about. Now, number four is gonna be an absolute doozy, and I'm guilty of number five, so you're gonna wanna stick around to see what that's all about. Before we get into all that, leave me a comment down below telling me about a concealed carry mistake that you're guilty of. While you're down there, be sure to give this video a like and subscribe to show me firearms and tick that bell for notifications so you never miss any of my latest videos. Number three, not training with your actual carry gun. Your life very well could depend on your carry gun and your ability to use it effectively. This means that you need to be intimately familiar with it. You need to know that gun inside and out, backwards and forwards. You have to become one with your carry gun and really make it an extension of yourself. And if you're spending you know, all your time training with a different make or model of handgun, you're just never gonna get to know your actual carry gun as well as you should. Now, of course, the skills that you learn on a different handgun are transferable to your actual carry gun. Like, for example, if I was to train a bunch with my Smith & Wesson m and I'm still gonna learn those good foundational skills like trigger control, recoil management, and so on. But then when I go to pick up my Glock 19, which is my actual carry gun, the feel of this exact gun is lost because I spent all my time training with the M&P. The weight of this Glock 19, the sight picture, the way the grip fits into my hand, the way the trigger feels, all this stuff gets lost because I spent all my time training on a Smith & Wesson and not the Glock 19. You have to know exactly how your carry gun feels as you present it to your target, as you squeeze the trigger and then manage that recoil. And of course, you can only learn how these things feel by training with your actual carry gun. So 
Train, train, train with the gun that you're gonna be carrying around every day and don't use the substitute. Number four, carrying on an empty chamber. Now, new concealed carriers, I know you guys are making this one because I made this exact same deadly mistake when I first started carrying my gun every day. And I totally get why you don't chamber around when you're carrying the gun on you. There's just like this weird thing in your brain that just doesn't feel safe with a loaded gun on you. Like, you know that the gun has safety mechanisms, you know that you have it in a good holster, you know that it's not gonna go off, but there's just this mental block that you just can't get past and it prevents you from chambering that first round before you head out the door. But the thing of it is you have to carry with a round in the chamber because if you ever find yourself in a situation where you're needing to use your gun, you're not gonna have time to rack that slide the chamber a first round or you may even just forget to rack the slot in the heat of the moment and now you're dead. So your life very well could depend on carrying with a round in the chamber. But how do you get past that mental block that won't let you carry with a round in the chamber? Well, here's what I did and it actually worked pretty good for me. What I did was I carried my gun just around the house a bunch with an empty chamber. And then I would check the gun every so often just to see did the firing pin somehow magically drop on its own? And did the firing pin ever drop on its own? Well, no, of course it didn't. So if the firing pin didn't somehow drop on its own on an empty chamber, it certainly wasn't going to with a round in there. So ever since I did that little experiment, I've never even batted an eye about carrying with a round in the chamber. So if you're a little bit nervous about carrying a loaded handgun, give this a try and see if it works for you and then leave me a comment down below and let me know how it went. Number five, not training with your actual carry ammo. And yes, I am guilty of this one, I'm ashamed to say, because whenever I'm out practicing with my Glock 19, I'm usually just running, you know, cheap range ammo. And I've never really run the actual defensive rounds that I use for EDC. And the reason for this is hollow points are just darn expensive. Like as of the filming of this video, last I checked, nine millimeter hollow points were going for up to a dollar per round in my local area. I mean, like you almost have to take out a loan just so that you can train with your carry ammo. So it's obviously not very financially responsible for probably the majority of us to be training with a steady diet of carry ammo, but we do have to make sure that we at least run through a couple boxes of our carry ammo every so often for a couple different reasons. First is we gotta verify that our carry ammo is actually going to feed reliably in our handgun because some guns out there can be a little bit picky when it comes to hollow points. So you just gotta verify that your carry ammo is gonna feed consistently and reliably through your handgun 100% of the time. Different types of ammo are also gonna recoil a little bit differently, so you need to make sure that you're familiar with how your carry ammo feels as your gun cycles. So best practice would be to do most of your training with cheap range ammo, you know, just so that you don't have to take out a second mortgage on your house or something. And then every so often, just run through a couple boxes of your carry ammo, you know, just so that you can verify that it still feeds reliably through your handgun and so that you can stay familiar with how the recoil feels. All right, what other concealed carry mistakes would you add to this list? Leave your answer in the comment section down below. And if you wanna learn about some situations when you shouldn't carry a gun, yeah, you heard me right, situations when you should not carry a gun, be sure to check out this video right up here. Thanks so much for watching today's video. I appreciate you being here. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and to check out all the cool stuff in my merch store. And until next time, show me them firearms. Now this is absolutely going to tick the government off. of the whole point of the Second Amendment, and that's why we love it so much.